hello good morning everyone welcome to this week's vlog you might be watching this in two months time but we'll see so it's monday morning and i am just making a cup of tea i've just been up with elliot so gabriel has been i don't know if anyone else's toddler has been like this but where it's been summer we had a period where gabriel was waking up at like five half five but recently he's slipped back into waking up more between like seven and eight and it's actually I think quarter to eight and he's still sleeping. So Elliot and I have had a nice little morning, actually Elliot slept until seven. So we've just had a little morning downstairs and Hainsley's asleep upstairs and so is Gabe. So we've had a nice little quiet morning together. Okay, okay tea's made, let's go back in the living room. Here he is. Who's this quarter's big boy? <laughs> look at the size of him. Oh, look at those legs. Oh, look at those legs, like little croissants, like gorgeous croissants. He's only six months, but he is literally the size of like an eight-month-old, I feel like. There's like a mum's fitness class I started going to on a Wednesday morning. I think I mentioned it in my last vlog, one of my clients runs it, and they bring their babies, and there's one woman who's got like a girl that's almost a year old, and she's like half the size of Elliot. <laughs> it's just so weird, look at his little face. <laughs> um, like mornings like this even though I'm with Elliot he's quite chilled and can usually just crawl around the floor well not crawl he's attempting to crawl but he can lay on the floor play with his little toys and then I can watch some YouTube and have a little cup of tea and a little just kind of quiet start to the day so it's quite nice <laughs> okay. so the plan today I'm doing hair um, I've got two clients while well, I'm doing a client's hair in the morning and then my friend's hair this afternoon. Oh, was that that? And um, the rest of the week is a quiet-ish week. I always say that and then it doesn't turn out to be that quiet. But Tuesday, Wednesday, when I go to the nursery, I am, I'm not doing hair, which I quite like to do. I should really do hair on Tuesday and Wednesday and I normally do because Gabe's at nursery. So there's only Elliot to look after. But I also sometimes like to, Tuesday and Wednesday is like days for me if I need to get things done because it's just easier with just Elliot um, and also if Hainsey's home I can just go off and do things and not feel like oh god there's two kids at home do you know what I mean does any other mum feel like that hello everyone uh, good morning so I started the vlog yesterday and obviously I, like that was it that's as far as we got for I had a client in the morning and then I did my friend's hair after her and then that took me to kind of the end of the day um and so i didn't really vlog anymore but we're here again on tuesday morning and i'm just sat in my car because i've just parked up um because i am going to go for an invisalign consultation and i'm so excited this isn't a hashtag ad i bloody wish it was i have wanted to do invisalign but to be honest i'm open it doesn't need to be invisalign i just want to sort my teeth out like it's the one thing that i really i'm not going to go as far as to say that i hate it about myself i like i don't i'm not depressed about it but i don't it's the one thing i really really want to change like there's other things i'd like to do my teeth is something that i'm desperate to sort out I mentioned before there isn't any point well there is a point doing it before kids but just make sure that you keep your retainer or get a fixed brace but know that having kids and being pregnant fucks your teeth up and they move and I did have braces as a kid and my teeth just moved I think I probably should have got some teeth taken out on the bottom because I've definitely got crowded teeth I've always had them very crowded at the front um, but since having Elliot the top my top teeth have like these two have definitely shifted um, so yeah just know that pregnancy messes up your teeth so if you're considering Invisalign and you're about to get pregnant or you want to get pregnant we like in the next few months years and you also want Invisalign I'd wait until we've had the kids anyway that's my advice to you god I'm so hot I'm gonna go in there now I've got 10 minutes really to my appointment but I'll just go in and so I'm here anyway here we go okay here we are I'm back I was gonna go out with Ellie Bells because we need to go into town to get nappies and just bits and bobs however Hazy's gone out we're having a gardener come who I've got to wait in for now because they came this morning and now they're coming back. So basically we're having some work, by no means exciting work done on our garden. Right, can you see this here? That, if you can see maybe on this side, possibly not, was filled with this gravelly stones. He's cleaned our patio, which looks lovely. But anyway, Gabe is a nightmare. Actually, he's chilled out a bit, but he has, he was really bad at one point. 
he's kind of chilled out but i'm just anticipating for when elliot gets older that he picks these stones up and puts them in his mouth and also he just throws them everywhere and it's just really annoying so i said to our landlord is there anything we can do about these stones around here we can try and get rid of them and just have a look at what's underneath basically and go from there i then said ideally if i own this house i'd want to redo that whole back area and make it a bit more kid friendly i also don't want to go on about the fact that the landlords actually took the garden that we should have our landlords live next door to us which is great we're very very lucky they're amazing however when they bought this house they took most of our garden um and if they hadn't have done we would have quite a big garden with grass and we'd have a like it'd be quite a long garden but we'd have like an area where i could have a vegetable patch we could probably have a swing and a slide like it's just it's just it's just quite annoying and every time i look out the back and see how big their garden is and the fact that they don't do anything with it i'm always like quite bitter about the fact that we would have a, be a bigger garden but we don't anyway so the point is we have this patio space which is actually quite sizable considering i've never really had an outdoor space like this so i can do something with it however it's not great for kids we're just taking out the gravel and i've said if you can fill it with soil if possible and then i can plant like almost like meadow flowers um or i was thinking maybe grasses but i don't know if it's deep enough but if you put just soil in it and then we can maybe put some little daisies and things to kind of go around it as a border um that would be better oh there's a yawn because i'd rather they eat dirt than stones to be honest um so that was that turned into a bit of a rant about my garden situation which no one asked for so i'm really sorry about that so long story short i was going to go out the garden's going to come back at some point so i have to wait in for him to come i don't know when that's going to be so there we go so have my invisalign consultation um it's very thorough lots of x-rays lots of scans goes into a lot of detail obviously which is what you would want but um i definitely want to go ahead the only thing is and i've started going to the dentist more regularly because i didn't for ages um and i've started to like go to the hygiene like i went to the hygienist two weeks ago and then i rebooked for the next six months and like now i'm like i need to just get on top of looking after my teeth because my gums are awful made worse by pregnancy but they are quite bad i do have gum disease and but apparently you can you can get it to a level where it's stable or it's inactive and that's where we're trying to get to it's much better than it was um but the dentist who just did my invisalign consultation was like i would rather like i want to wait and get it a bit more stable but we can go ahead but we just need to wait for your gums to get a little bit better and then we can go for it so i have a follow-up appointment with my normal dentist in august which is a three-month follow-up from when i first saw her to assess my gums again and i've been using like interdental sticks and flossing and i use like two different toothpastes and i'm like really on it i've already got been got so much better than they were a couple of months ago i just i know that just from when i'm brushing them um but that's where we are look at those knees oh oh sorry that's my back door that wasn't me farting or you was it were you farting right get those legs in <laughs> hi it's you in a high chair because we are weaning <laughs> i say weaning i've been really really bad um it's so funny with your second as everyone says that poor second child because definitely when i started weaning game i was very much like week one week two following like all the things to introduce them to and it's lucky if he's had food like every other day at this point and we've kind of been doing this for two weeks but he definitely hasn't had food every day for two weeks <laughs> today's food is going to be this pouch <laughs> that's just where we are i mean i did a mix of pouches with gabe because honestly like when you're busy and working like it's the easiest thing i went to like a mum and baby like exercise class and it was all like first time mums not to be like oh, first time mums because i'm not that much of a professional mum but it is things like they were talking about weaning and one of them used the phrase like oh i finally gave in and just gave a pouch and i was like okay because honestly pureeing your own vegetables at this stage so i didn't really do i mean basically he can sit up quite well in the high chair now he was bending forward quite a lot but i'm doing same as gabe like i'm not really precious about any of it but i'm doing like a mixture of puree and kind of baby led um so this one is pea past dip and pear he's had plain pea he's had spinach broccoli and pea no spinach broccoli and something else 
and he's had sweet potatoes as pouches but he's had banana as a banana and avocado as an avocado but until he can sit up a little bit better i'm probably still going to be doing a mixture of the puree pouch things um and then some soft fruit and veg so there we go i can't remember how you wean a child how do you get them on solids and so i'm just doing one meal a day but i'm like when do i start get, giving up like when do we start stopping like a bottle and replacing it with food when do i get to two meals a day like and i'm sure it will come like naturally i'll be like oh we're ready now but it's just this first bit is just really overwhelming because i'm like I, I can't remember how to do this so i did um i have consulted a book the annabelle carmel one i have that with gabe but yeah once he can sit up properly for longer i will start doing a bit more baby led because this time around i am quite keen for at least him and Gabe to be eating similar things. Is that yummy? Gardener's been gone uh, and he, let me show you what he's done. Basically he's put soil here. He's also cemented this bit here, which that never used to be. It used to have like a mat going across. So that's good, he's leveled that off. And then we've got soil down there. Um, and then he's gonna come back because he needs to do just a little bit more tomorrow, I think. But basically I might put some seeds in this soil of just um, I don't know if you can see, in this trough here, I've got, what are they called? Something in there <laughs> that looks very pretty that I feel like I could use as a border. But we'll go into that in another vlog. Um, but anyway, Elliot's sleeping. I haven't eaten loads today. I had mayonnaise sandwich when I got back from the dentist, but I'm starving. So I've just made myself a tuna and hummus salad with a little bit of balsamic. And I've got a pitta, which is actually going cold. So I'm going to eat this now, but yes. Um, that's me, I'm just gonna watch some YouTube and eat this salad. Good morning, it's now Wednesday. Can't remember where we left off yesterday. Just dropped Gabe to nursery and I've popped into town because I've got to take something back to the post office. And I also need to grab Elliot some more long sleeve bodysuits from H&M. I need to go to Waitrose because we're going to my friends, we, me and Elliot, are going to my friend's house for lunch today, which will be lovely. So I'm gonna grab some picky bits. And then there were some other things that I needed to get, which I've written on my notes on my phone because I always forget everything. Hello, good morning everyone. It's pissing rain actually, so that's great. The other day of vlogging came to an abrupt end. Also my hair's just been rained on, so it looks like this. Which actually isn't that bad. Um, I was gonna style it, but I actually might just keep it like this because who really cares? Yes, sorry, hold on, I've just got a text. The other day came to an abrupt end, which I will explain like a bit later, <laughs> which sounds a bit ominous, a bit of a cliffhanger there. It's something I've thought about talking about, but I'm not sure, but I think I will. Anyway, but we can talk about that later on. Is my battery gonna? Not that you guys need a reason, and I've never been particularly consistent, let's be honest, but it will help kind of give a bit of context to that as well. I'm just in my salon this morning because I'm doing my friend's hair. I've just gone to pick up some colour from Sally's because she wants a specific tone of balayage. So basically, I'm in the salon. We will catch up properly later, um, but I'm just saying good morning. Hello. Yeah, I bought this in because it's something very exciting that I'm going to open with you that I ordered on Amazon Prime Day. Oh. Firstly, we've got two sleeping angels. Wonderful. Secondly, I will fill you in on the cliffhanger I left you. I mean, fill you in. Um, Basically, I'll you on what's been going on. I have debated whether to talk about this because once you share something online, it's very hard to unshare it. And I just don't, I just don't know how I feel about how much detail to go into. And the reason I'm sharing this is more from my perspective and to support any other people that might go through this. I have mentioned here and there about Gabe's development. So in March of this year, we got an autism diagnosis for him. I obviously had a very young baby at that point too. So it's all just been a bit, I wanna talk about it because I haven't gone through it. It is the type of thing, like I have lots of support around me and everyone's been so wonderful. However, I've really found it helpful to speak to other mums that have gone through this, other mums of autistic children, because it's a very unique experience to go through and it's one of those rare ones that no one could really understand unless you've gone through it. And I can say that because I wouldn't have understood 
or known the feelings that come with it and how isolating and lonely it can be when it's first kind of happening. I think I did touch on this when I was worrying about his development previously, like you just withdraw. You withdraw from other parents and children, you withdraw your child from being exposed to other adults mainly in my case just because people will notice the older they get the more difficult it is because you don't really have as much of an excuse of why they might be delayed like it's just or different it's just it's just a lot I mean some of you that ha are maybe going through this might hear me talking about this now and be like you seem quite chilled about this and I'm only now able to talk about it without bursting into tears I, but I actually kind of feel like I could get upset now because I feel like this is this is different to just talking to like friends about but there have been months where I've cried most days and haven't been able to talk about it haven't been able to really come to terms with it and have just felt really sad <laughs> leading up to it as well like we we kind of knew I feel like I'm getting upset but I'm not we kind of knew um oh <sighs> I really didn't think I was going to get upset talking about this because I talk about this really openly now but there's something about doing this talking by myself in my kitchen <laughs> so there's been months really that there have been tears most days um, and just huge amounts of worry <sighs> grief all that kind of stuff and then coupled with the fact that I also was heavily pregnant and having a baby it was just a lot so that's that now you know <laughs> uh, so if ever I I'm a bit distant or I have I start vlogging and then I don't vlog for days or I upload and then don't upload for weeks like that's probably why as well as working the reason I'm telling you this is because I haven't vlogged since I, the beginning of the other day and even then I've been upset that morning but I try to, to not think about it but basically everything kind of came to a head this week with his childminder and up until this point it's been a really great experience she's been wonderful with him she's done a lot with him she's really helped us with this diagnosis however it's just gone a bit sour and essentially as like a top line not to bore anyone he was going to stay there from september after he turns three and it was agreed by everyone that's involved with gabe that that would be the best thing however things can change like well things feel like they don't change for ages and then suddenly things can really change when you have a child with additional needs or neurodiversity however you, what you want to call it and i had basically she, our child manager been telling us the last few weeks specifically he had become slightly more challenging and when i say challenging he just gets really upset and it can be at the drop of a hat i wonder if this is delayed terrible twos i can see how in a small child setting a small like child care setting which is in her house and she doesn't have many other kids and they're all younger it can be a lot to deal with um so this has been brought up and i kept saying like do we need to find somewhere that's got more support and i was told no it's fine and it it, it became apparent basically that it, it's not fine hainsey and i had a big chat and i just we both really felt like actually i think maybe it's time to start looking for something else and i had kind of thought that but all the settings around me just weren't what i wanted and i I don't want to send him to a big like chain nursery and the right setting in my mind would be something that's kind of forest schooly not too structured but structured enough that they're doing things and that can support him with his progression and understands kids like Gabe in the last week literally two of these options have popped up and I couldn't be more excited at the prospect one is like a forest school type thing and I actually had one of my clients mention this to me and as soon as I saw that I was like that is exactly what I want and they've said on their website they talk about if you've got additional needs we can talk about it and so that feels really welcoming and open because there is a side to looking for a new childcare setting that I I felt hesitant to say about Gabe's needs because you should be you just feel like there's going to be a judgment made already and you don't want that and that, that's why like this whole thing is so challenging because you're constantly just worrying about the judgments that's going to be made about them and but you don't actually know it's like being told already your kid's going to have challenges but you actually have no idea you actually have no idea like how much these challenges are going to impact them and how much of an issue they're going to be for like another three years so that's why it's really really hard <laughs> um 
to just come to terms with and every day is different it's so up and down this forestry school type thing i was like yes amazing so we're going to go and see that next week they have spaces oh that was it i said about his um diagnosis and they were like great um not great but <laughs> they no, not a problem come and see us we've got spaces we asked for two sessions minimum per week so i was like great so we're going to go and see that next week and all going well he could definitely go there another option also came up that was to i was told about but it was past the deadline that I found out about it because it was after Gabe's diagnosis and the deadline for the application was like March. This is a nursery, again it's, they call themselves an outdoor nursery. They actually have, well they have a special provision for autistic children, they've got an area where it's like six autistic kids and they are just in there and they go in and out of the mainstream bit but they're more focused in there. But you can't apply for that, you have to be nominated by a panel in our borough. So we missed the boat with that and I knew that we had done. However, within the mainstream setting, because of this, they're very, very set up f to support children with autism in the mainstream setting. And it's very oversubscribed, typical or, or autistic or additional needs. Like everyone wants to go to this nursery because it's got this forest school type ethos. And it just seems like a really great place um, to be for any child. I didn't even entertain it because, of, as I say, the deadline's passed and I thought it's so oversubscribed all the time that we're not gonna have a chance. My friend was like, just give them a call. So I gave them a call. They said, actually, potentially we do have spaces for September. So we've also applied for there. But basically he can definitely go to one TBC on whether he can go to the other. But the outcome is that Hainsley and I both are like, absolutely, we have to do this. And there isn't a bone in my body that feels like this isn't the right thing to do. And I now feel actually very excited for him in this next step. However, it just wasn't a nice process having to tell his childminder and she didn't take it very well and it's just not been a great um, ending, <laughs> I suppose, to an otherwise fine experience. So he's there for another six weeks, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's that. Um, that was, I hope that wasn't too boring and long-winded for anyone. Um, yeah, I don't know, as I say, if I'll ever talk about this again, but I just... Maybe I guess wanted to start the conversation. It may not be of interest to anyone and that's fine, but I just thought perhaps if it helps someone that's going through this and feels lonely, know that I'm here and I see you and I hold space for you. Also, I'm quite sensitive to the fact that if you are, someone might be autistic watching this and this doesn't sound very nice um, and I don't want it to be offensive, but I'm just trying to be honest about the reality of going through this as a parent because we have to be able to be open about these things because this is just the feelings that come with it so i just want to say that as well because everyone is perfect just as they are and gabe is a perfect angel <sighs> and i love him so much oh my little angel boy oh gabe is such a gorgeous boy anyway just stop and let's open this wonderful amazon parcel which isn't an ad and i know that i shouldn't be shopping on amazon prime but those deals <laughs> this is so exciting right so basically this is two things that i've wanted for a while and amazon prime recently did these two days of deals which i felt i feel awful about i feel like in friends when monica buys a bed from the mattress king do you know what i mean if anyone knows that reference it's quite niche anyway so it's it's cooking stuff i wanted both of these things but the one I really wanted was this, and I've been had my eye on it for ages, and I was just going to get this, which is one of these sets. So you get the blender thing. Well, it's it's all a blendy blendy situation. A whisk, uh, whatever this is, and and this. <laughs> Obviously, I know all the technical jargon. Just a hand blender with different parts, basically. But I wanted this so that I could make my own curry paste. I want to make my own pesto, make my own hummus, all that kind of stuff. And also like soup, things like that, puree stuff for the kids. I mean, Gabe doesn't need puree, but Elliot kind of does. But you know, make a sauce, all that sort of stuff. So this is what I was going to get. So I went online because I was like, oh my God, Amazon Prime Day, let's buy this. And it was cheaper. But they had a deal where you could also add on just the hand mixer. So like a whisk, even though a whisk comes in that, but I just couldn't resist the two. So this comes with like a normal whisk, like those things, but also... A balloon whisk and those so that you can make bread what's they called dough hooks about 40 pounds cheaper than it would have been if i'd bought them both individually like full price so i you know i i think you'll agree i couldn't say no um but i wanted these but also 
going forward cooking with the boys. Gabe loves to cook with me. Um, he loves being in the kitchen with me and he loves helping. So this I, in particular I wanted so that we can make cakes together because um, I think he'll love it. And I'm just, I think he'll just find this quite fun, like turning it on and off. So it's also with that in mind because yeah, I love having the kids involved in the house stuff. And Gabe seems to like that. Let's hope Elliot does too. And then I'll never have to do the washing or cook again. <laughs> Here we go, that is, oh look, that'll be us making our little chocolate cakes. Oh. Anyway, so there we go. That is a very disjointed conversation that I've just had with you. <laughs> I'm actually gonna order delivery because as I say, Hainsley's out, mum's night in, and can I be bothered to cook? Absolutely not. I also, just before I um, sign off for the night, although maybe I'll show you my pizza, um, it's so autumnal. I've got my slippers on and my joggers. Like, this is like my cosy outfit. Um, and I was, yeah, down here on the floor just after putting the boys to bed. And I was like, I need my bloody slippers on. It's freezing. It's not freezing. It's definitely not freezing. But I just felt like I need my slippers. Um, so, yeah, I'm feeling quite cosy because it's been raining all day and it's supposed to rain all weekend. Brilliant.